Hi, this is Lou Dolphin, again, for Sentinels of the Multiverse Weekly one-shot number 29, where I try to get Mint the first try, and if we don't, we try to get it the second try, and thus far it's only taken us at most two tries, at least on stream, or not on stream, on video. Um, I only started on week 9, and there was an earlier one-shot that might have taken more than one try, but let's go ahead and look at this one. The Gong Show. From the realm of Discord, almost live, it's The Gong Show! If you just ain't good enough, we're gonna gong it! With celebrity judges, the portal fiend, misguided fool, and of course, the ever-incorrigible Wageling! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the host with the most, the one and only, Wagermaster! <laughs> Hopefully that was cool. Uh, Wagermaster against Santa Guys, Visionary and Expatriate, in... The Realm of Discord. Cool. It's not advanced. Um, so let's do this. Honestly, I've not played Santa Guys more than once, so this can be fun. Actually, I played it twice on tabletop, but only once in-game. It's all fun and games until someone loses one of those games and is tossed into the sun. You're on my naughty list, little fella. Where's your holiday cheer, hmm? Okay. So, Santa Guys starts with the best card ever, a retcon. Um, yeah, I'm that guy. And where did I leave that? Um, I should have just drived those cards, but oh well. It's too late at this point. I'm showing them on the screen at least. Uh, Visionary has a decoy projection, which can redirect damage from Visionary to this card. A mental divergence, which provides a power to destroy an ongoing or move an ongoing from a trash onto the top of the hero's deck. A Psychic Maelstrom to deal each non-hero target to Psychic Damage, and a Rest the Mind to redirect damage from a target that this is played next to. Uh, if that happens, the Visionary is dealt, a uh, Visionary and that target is dealt 3 Psychic Damage each. Uh, an Expatriate starts with a Reload to take an ammo card from the trash and put into play or your hand. A RPG Launcher to destroy an ongoing or environment card and deal some damage if that is done. Shock Rounds played next to a gun to uh, change the damage type of that damage and then... Or not, sorry, not to damage. Or change the damage type, but rather after that, dam that, after that power deals damage, uh, then Expatriate deals each non-hero target one lightning damage. And then a submachine gun. So here's her only gun she has right now, and its power is to deal each non-hero target one projectile damage. And, okay, so Santa Guys, if you have never played him before, he has two base powers. The first is to put the top card of each hero deck face down in their play area, and the second is for one player to flip all face down cards in their play area, treating them as if they were just put into play. So... Unlike Guys' original power, which is to draw a card or play a card, how to choose! Also, Guys deals one target, one melee damage, but who? This, um, doesn't provide the... Well, it doesn't provide more plays or draws from Guys' end. But it does put more cards face down in everyone's play areas. Um, so it takes a little bit of time to get built up, but once there are enough presents down in front of everyone, you can use the second power to flip all of the face down cards putting them into play, so it's a bit random as to this effectiveness, but, you know, if you wait long enough, you can get so many cards in play in one turn, and, well, with not, not with this vision, visionary, but with, um, with dark visionary, you could even control what that card is for at least guys, or for, like, um, other heroes who are able to get cards from the trash put on the top of decks, that would be powerful. Visionary does have a mental divergence, which would enable an ongoing to be put on the top of a hero deck. Um, but unless we don't, unless we intentionally skip a card draw, this would only really benefit guys. Um, but anyway, so Wager Master, this is the first time he's been in a weekly one shot. At the start of the game, Wager Master enters play a cosmic challenge side up. Cards are revealed from the top of the villain deck until three condition cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain deck, which is shuffled. So he starts with three conditions, and a lot of his deck is composed of conditions. And unfortunately, on both sides, he has the clause condition cards, and on this side, face down villain cards are indestructible. So 
is also true on his flip side, which I'll read in a second, but there it is, condition cards are indestructible. So when a, condi when a condition comes out, it's permanent. It's always lasting. Well, not really. A lot of these conditions have a condition uh, to be flipped face down. For instance, not all he seems. says, whenever Wager Master would be dealt damage, prevent that damage and flip this card face down instead. So even though a condition is out, usually it can get flipped. Um, at the start of the villain turn, if there are two or more face down villain cards in play, Wager Master flips. Condition cards and face down villain cards are indestructible, as I said. At the end of the villain turn, X hero cards in play are returned to their player's hands, where X is the number of face down villain cards in play. So, so if we get him the flip, which we don't have to do, but if we get him the flip, uh, when Wager Master flips to the side, all condition cards are flipped face down. So even the ones that you didn't get to flip face down get flipped face down. At the start of the villain turn, all face down villain cards are shuffled, then the first card is flipped face up and treated as if it had just been put into play. So it gets a one of a face down condition card put back face up, but they remain indestructible. But if there are ever no face down villain cards in play, Wager Master flips. At the end of the villain turn, Wager Master deals each non villain target two energy damage. So on this side, on this flip side, there's a little bit of randomness going on with which condition comes back into play. But, um, but it's a little bit dangerous because he deals each non-villain target two energy to damage. So it's a, it's not really wise to really get him to flip necessarily. Sometimes you do need to get him to flip though. He does. So the condition cards provide alternate win or loss conditions. Losing to the odds is a good one because it provides an alternate win condition, uh, but not all he seems also is an alternate win condition, but an unwise wager provides an alternate loss condition. If any hero deck ever has no cards in it, the heroes lose the game. Or the new deal. Uh, at the end of the villain turn, each hero target with an even amount of HP deals itself three psychic damage. If a hero is inca incapacitated this way, the heroes lose the game. Or who are you fighting, which is the strangest one. Because when it enters play, each player draws a card and each target regains two HP. But if Wager Master is reduced to zero or fewer HP, the heroes lose the game. So if you, want, if you don't have a means of instantly destroying guys, which this team doesn't, and this condition is out, the only way that you can win the game, well, sorry, other than a condition card, victory. If you don't have a victory condition out, but you have this one out, then you'll lose the game anyway if you d if you try to d reduce Vager Wager Master to zero if you were HP, so it's a little bit dangerous if this one is out. Alright, enough said. Let's go ahead and start the game. Well, before I do that. I'm pretty sure I forgot to set this down. I put this back up for a video I recorded, but we'll put it back down so I can read these cards. So we're starting with three conditions, and the first one is losing to the odds, which is one I pointed out. At the end of the villain turn, if each hero target has an even amount of current HP, but less than their maximum HP, the heroes win the game. Actually, I don't think I... Or I did read this one, yeah. So if each hero target has, has an even amount of current HP, but less than their maximum, the heroes win the game. If not, destroy one non-villain target with four HP or fewer. And Wagelings, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target one melee damage. When this card is reduced to zero or fewer HP, flip it face down. At the start of the villain turn, if there are more he villain targets than hero targets, the heroes lose the game. So this one is going to hit all of us for one. It's a condition, so it's in fact indestructible, but it's still a target, so when it's reduced to zero or fewer, you can't instantly destroy it, but if you get it reduced to zero or fewer, it gets flipped face down. It also gets flipped face down if Wager Master flips, because his, his flip mechanic, when he flips to his other side, all of the conditions get flipped face down. But this is another alternate loss condition. If there are more villain targets than hero targets, the heroes lose the game. And it's... Fun fact, you can instantly lose a Wager Master game if all of the conditions he plays at the start of the game are Wagelings, but it's a small chance. And another Wagelings. So we have three Wagelings and three heroes. So we're fine right now. So 
His card play. Pick a card, pick a fate. One shot. Choose a keyword. Reveal the top card of the villain deck. If the revealed card has that keyword, discard it, even if it is an indestructible card. If not, put the card into play. So we have a choice between condition, one shot, and ongoing. And if we choose correctly, the card gets discarded. If we don't, it's put into play. So most of his deck is conditions. And... Most conditions are ongoing except for wagelings. He does have a few ongoings that are not conditions, and he has some one shots. So we can look. We, he has 21 cards in his deck, and he has 8 one shots, and he has, let's see, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13 ongoings. And he has one, two, three, four, six, seven conditions. Really, that few? Typically, I just answer condition for this because I always thought there were more conditions, but it seems like there are more ongoings. Like a burning sense of failure, whenever a condition card is flipped face down, Wager Master deals the hero target with the highest HP to fire. Or breaking the rules, which says the phases of hero turns are now end of turn draw a card, use a power play a card start of turn, which really messes with people learning the game. Uh, and what do you really know? At the end of the villain turn, shuffle the top card of each villain deck into the villain deck. If a hero card is on the top of the villain deck, move it to that hero's trash and Wager Master deals that hero for psychic damage. This card is indestructible. Uh, and those are pretty bad. Some of the conditions are bad, but it seems like there are more ongoings than conditions, and not too many one-shots. So let's guess ongoing. And it was an ongoing, so we lost the new deal, and a lot of that text just flew by, so I missed what it was. But a new deal was the card that was revealed. So, um... Yeah, so this is one I read out loud earlier. At the end of the villain's turn, each hero target with an even amount of HP deals itself 3 psychic damage. If a hero is incapacitated this way, the heroes lose the game. Whenever a villain card is slipped face down, Wager Master regains 3 HP. So... So we have two Wage Leagues that are each dealing us 1. But let us recall that... We have an alternate win condition with losing to the odds. If each hero target has an even amount of current HP, but less than their maximum HP, the heroes win the game. This is at the end of the villain turn, so the start of turn checks happen first. First off, at the start of villain turn, if there are two or more face down villain cards, Wager Master flips, as well as if there are more villain targets than hero targets, the heroes lose the game. So if we can somehow get guys an expatriate to an even amount of HP since visionaries are already at an even as well as maintaining that they're less then we'll possibly win the game the only problem is that guys' only damage dealing card currently deals an even amount of HP which will not put odd to even visionaries only damage dealer is for each non-hero target and expatriates only damage dealers well rpg launcher is even damage and submachine gun is non-heroes and shock rounds is non-heroes so we currently don't have the means of being able to hit guys or expatriates for an even amount if we take out one of the wagelings then we'll have to return a non we'll have to return one of our cards to hand by at the end of the villain turn um, which includes Santa Guys's cards when he puts a top card of each hero deck face down their play area. Uh, one thing I can do. No, I can't, never mind. I thought this was not the card it was. Um, so this card s says to give another player, another player high five, and if I do, treat this card as if I had the game text of a very ongoing card in that player's play area. I always confuse this with. I can do that too, which says guys uses a power printed on an active hero character card in play. If that power has that the name of a hero on it, treat that name as if we're guys instead, and you want that card means guys as player. Uh, this is also not to be confused with let me see that, 
which is to play this card next to an equipment card, and that card affects guys as the hero name on that card were guys, and you on that card means guys as player. At the start of your turn, play air guitar and destroy this card. Okay. So, best card ever. A lot of people love. Actually, I guess this is a good thing to try to do. Draw two cards. Guys deals one target, two melee damage. Guys regains one HP. This is oh, this is actually pretty good because this will put guys at even amounts less than his maximum. And if you throw your hands in the air and yell "woo," you may play a card. So we'll try that. It will not put expatriates at an even, but we can hit wagelings. If we can, well, actually, I probably don't want to destroy both of the wagelings at this point because it's gonna put expatriate and guys to odd if that happens. So yeah, so let's see this. So we get a gimmicky character to discard the top card of every deck and guys who gains HP equals the number of target cards discarded and then play a card. As well as, look what I found is that target's still around. Uh, if so, increase the next damage dealt by guys by one. Um, so actually, if I do look what I found on expatriate, she'll be even. Of course, we still have to make sure that that um <laughs> that the realm of Discord doesn't mess that up, but or that Wager Master's turn doesn't mess that up. So let's hmm. Well, since there are already two Wagelings out, we're gonna have problems if too many wage links come out. On the other hand, there is not a loss condition for reducing Wager Master to zero. So let's hit Wager Master with this. Since it gets the Nemesis bonus. We'll woo. And we'll hit Expatriate with this. This puts her at an even amount less than her maximum. And now we get our power. Let's put the top card of each hero deck face down in their play area. So this is a cool an animation if you've never seen it before. That's representing everyone getting their face down card. We draw a gritty reboot. Whenever guys is dealt damage, you may draw a card. All right. So visionary. Uh, she has a decoy protection, which can help with the wagelings condition because if there's a decoy projection out, that adds to the hero target count. So if there are four heroes and uh, four hero targets and four villain targets, that's okay. This is villain targets, right? Villain targets, then hero targets. So we can save the decoy projection for the round that a third wagelings comes out. And that way we wouldn't be so screwed up. Um, I could put out the mental divergence, but so wait. So guys does have two cards in this trash, but they're both one shots. An expatriate doesn't have anything in her trash, and nor does visionary. Um, I could rest wagelings mind, but that would be a bit silly. I mean, so rest the mind. A lot of people sort of don't like because. Uh, you play this next to a card, or next to a target other than a character card. Whenever that target deals damage, you may redirect that damage to another target. If you do, this is the clause that people get upset with, the visionary deals the target next to this card and herself three psychic damage each. What many people don't realize is that, um, if the target leaves play, destroy this card. So if the target you play this next to only has three, dam three HP, and you redirect the damage to whatever target you want, then the visionary deals that target three psychic damage. If that target then leaves play, this card is destroyed, so she doesn't subsequently deal herself three psychic damage. So this is a means of dealing damage to a target to be able to destroy it. Now if the target has more than three HP, but has like five, and you're redirecting an instance of two, you can redirect that two to itself, and then Visionary deals the target 3 Psychic damage, and then that target is destroyed. And that happens on the villain turn. So it's it's a nice way of destroying a target. A lot of people think of this just as, I'm going to use this to redirect damage, but you can use this to destroy targets more easily. If I play it next to Wagelings, unfortunately the Wagelings only deal 1 melee damage each, but if I play Submachine Gun 
Oh, actually, I won't be able to destroy it because it'll only do one. It'd be nice if I can play submachine gun and shock rounds. But that's not happening. So, uh, Psychic Maelstrom would be more potent, at least, because it will do two damage to all. Decoy Projection, I want to save for the round that there are too many Wagelings. Because the check for more villain targets than hero targets happens at the start of the villain turn. Does the Realm of Discord provide villain card plays outside of the villain turn? That's probably one thing that should be checked. I... Time Flies provides a, car a villain card play at the start of the villain turn. So, that would be dangerous if a Wagelings is played. Because if a Wagelings gets played at the start of the villain turn, then its start of turn check happens immediately. So I really have to play the decoy projection to be absolutely safe. And then one player draws two cards, then discards one card. So, um, we have a submachine gun. But I would like to probably get the assault rifle. The assault rifle will be more potent right now. And I usually like her tactical shotgun a lot more. So let's do Expatriate, and she does draw the Assault Rifle I just mentioned, and a Flak Jacket, and now we discard one. So... So you should never discard Reload when you have an ammo in your hand, because you could reload it to put the ammo into play. Um... And... Yeah, I think I'll discard shock rounds. I want to keep the RPG launcher in case a bad ongoing comes out that I can destroy. Because it's, it's our only source. Well, actually, no, we do have Visionaries' uh, mental divergence. But we'll discard shock rounds. And then Visionary draws another decoy projection. So now Expatriate will play that assault rifle and then can hit all of the villain targets for two since it deals three uh, targets and these are all targets. And we draw an unload to use as many powers as you have guns in play. Currently we only have one gun, so it's not super nice. And an imbued fatality come out, comes out, so increase all damage dealt by one. So now as long as Wager Master doesn't... Oh, and that destroyed decoy projection because that's a distortion. So Wagelings came out, but we should have won to losing to the odds. All hero targets have an even amount of HP, which is less than their maximum HP. Losing to the odds causes the heroes to win! And we're done. We're done. We just won. We got the mint. So. <laughs> I know, it's strange. It's strange. We won the game. Are you serious? Did we win the game? I probably should have meanwhile I don't know if there was a meanwhile button. But I should have meanwhile But let's be let's recall that we had the losing to the odds condition out, which said that at the end of the villain turn, if each hero target has an even amount of HP which is less than their maximum HP, the heroes win the game. I know that's a silly way for us to win the game, since it's like, did we actually win? We didn't actually destroy Wager Master. But the thing to understand about Wager Master is that he puts out those conditions, and you saw a few of them. Not all of them provide alternate victories, they also provide alternate losses. And the Wagelings that got played would have provided an alternate loss if we had lasted one more round. Because there were four, there was a total of four villain targets, and only three hero targets since the Realm of Discord destroyed the decoy projection. So, it could have played against us as well. And if all three of his initial condition cards were all Wagelings, we would have lost the game before we even had our first action. That can happen, a very small chance. So, Wager Master isn't really a, a true blue game, if that makes sense. It's... It's, a, it's sort of a random game, where random things happen. But, in this case, we took advantage of the losing to the odds to win on the second villain turn. 
And so this is one of my shortest... One of my shortest, one of my shorter, I guess is the phrase, one of my shorter weekly one-shots. So, that's it. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and that you get mint on your own attempt. If you just follow what I do, obviously you'll get mint, but hopefully you're not watching this and then replicating my plays, because that wouldn't be honest. But in any case, have a good day.